Hello and welcome back to Bookish. You may be aware that every summer for the last, what is it, three, four years now, uh, I've been a participant in uh, what's called uh, Faulkner in August. This year we did what we called the Summer of Snopes, and we took on the entire Snopes trilogy. That is, we read the three Faulkner novels, which basically follow the, uh, <laughs> adventures would be the wrong word, but follow Flem Snopes uh, and his activities, uh, and those three novels are The Hamlet, The Town, uh, and the mansion, and we read all three of those this summer. Now, it's entirely possible that's too much Faulkner to try to read at one time, because a thousand pages of Faulkner spread over three months did seem like a lot, and I did struggle uh, to to kind of get myself back to reading the mansion here at the end, of, or there at the end of August. So the Snopes trilogy is, I think, a really important piece of Faulkner's work. But it's not his best work, not by a long shot. He is not at his best. He's also not at his worst. Um, the Snopes trilogy, in lots of ways, is an example of what one of the things that Faulkner is, did quite frequently was to kind of cannibalize or to recycle his old works. He was one of the uh, most consistent at taking his short stories and folding them into, into making novels. This is true to a certain extent for what the novel we call Go Down Moses and The Unvanquished. And several of his short stories get worked into the Snopes trilogy as well. Uh, sometimes this works well, sometimes it doesn't. There are times uh, in reading The Hamlet, The Town, and even The Mansion where I thought, this is really great. This book is really great. And Faulkner, you know, is on, on his form right here. And then there would be a new section in which it was just convoluted for convoluted sake, I thought, uh, and not necessarily Faulkner's best work or his best writing, um, and that kind of marred the book a little bit. Additionally, he wrote these books over a really long period of time. I believe he wrote The Hamlet in the 40s, The Town maybe in the late 40s, early 50s, and then he didn't write The Mansion, I want to say, until the late 50s. So a long period of time takes stretches between them. So particularly in The Mansion, there's a lot of uh, retelling of the story of Phlegm Snopes that you find in the hamlet and the town. And that can be kind of, if you've read the other two as close together as we did, that can be kind of trying to kind of go back and read the stories again. In Faulkner's defense, he does add things. There is nuance. They are told from a different perspective. And so that's, that's kind of important as well. But I thought today I would talk about the Snopes trilogy to kind of wrap up my Faulkner in August uh, and talk about those novels. So that's what I want to do today. So I want to start off with what I think are the two themes of uh, the Snopes trilogy. And one of these is the theme that it, I think really dominates uh, Faulkner's work in general. And that, that, that theme is to look at the social changes taking place in the South after the Civil War and how social mobility became easier for people who had been in the lower social classes, not African Americans, of course, uh, because of you know continued Jim Crow and racism, et cetera, and things like that, but to look at you know how the social classes changed changed after the Civil War, the decay of the wealthy ruling class, the rise of other classes and of the lower social classes, and really the Snope trilogy is a great example of Faulkner exploring those themes through the main character of Flim Snopes. The other theme I would I think that I find here is maybe it's not a theme so much as a subtext is the importance of family in the South and how important kind of your your familiar your familial connections were and how much they determined how society was going to view you and how you know how high you could rise uh, in Southern society because you know before the Civil War those family connections were really. Uh, pretty much everything. You know, if you were a yeoman farmer and you owned your own land, your kids would probably be the same and so on. Uh, if you were what in the South we referred to as poor white trash, those were white people who lived in the South and didn't own any land and were tenant farmers or squatters or whatever, then that's probably all you were ever going to be. And we see kind of the leftovers of that. You know, we see the leftovers of the Southern kind of ruling class gentry and the fact that the sons of actual Civil War officers are still called by their father's rank. So, you know, Major Despain in the Snopes trilogy is called Major Despain, not because he served in the 
Spanish-American War so much as because his father had been a major uh, during the Civil War. And Colonel Sartoris is, Colonel, is not really the Colonel Sartoris who fought in the Civil War, but rather his son. And so we see all these kind of elements of social class mixed in here. And Flem then becomes this kind of symbol of social class climbing. Uh, and really what, what the Snopes books are is they are a chronicle of Flem's rise from poor white trash to wealth and at least the trappings of social respectability. And it kind of looks at how he achieves those things, how people respond to him, and what he gets from that. So in the Snopes trilogy, there are three novels. The first of them is The Hamlet. The Hamlet is, in The Hamlet, Flem ruthlessly takes takes over this little community outside of the capital or the county seat of Yachtner Potapa County, this little community called Frenchman's Bend. Frenchman's Bend had been more or less dominated by a family called the Varners since the end of the Civil War up until uh, when Flem Snopes appears and he is a Flem is going to rise to a position of prominence and dominance in Frenchman's Bend by threats or at least veiled threats, sharp business practices, cheating, um, and in the end, he eventually kind of wins out and emerges from Frenchman's Bend as somebody to reckon with because he marries the daughter of uh, the Varner. Of, he marries into the Varner family because the daughter of the Varner patriarch uh, has become pregnant outside of wedlock and he agrees to marry her. And that's kind of how he gets his hands on uh, some of the Varner fortune and the Varner name. And he uses that to kind of vault himself into a position in which he can leave uh, behind Frenchman's Bend and move on. In Frenchman's Bend, he is opposed primarily by a sewing machine salesman who is uh, really wise and considered to be the sharpest, smartest person in that community. His name is V.K. Ratcliffe. Series VK Ratliff and Ratliff gets the best of Flem on one occasion and then Flem pays him back in a big way. Flem, all, uh, Flem also has to deal with family members while he's in Frenchman's Bend. He brings in various family members to help him out to run a store, to run a blacksmith shop so he can work at the cotton gin. He does all these kind of things and he relies on his family members and in the process he helps to kind of elevate or lift up some of his family members, many of whom are really far more unpleasant people than Flem Snopes is, but Flem is the smart one and Flem is the ruthless one. One of those family members is his cousin Mink and Mink Snopes kills a member of kind of the middle class in and around Frenchman's Bend and he's going to go to jail for murder and all the time Mink thinks that Flem is going to help him out, that Flem is going to help get him out of, out of this mess that he's in. And when Flem doesn't, that kind of, you know, that kind of sets the mold for what's going to happen moving forward. So at the end of the Hamlet, you know, Flem and his wife, Eula Varner, the daughter of Frenchman, Bend, you know, society leaders, uh, the Varners are going to be, are going to leave Frenchman's Bend and they're headed to the town of Jefferson, which is where the town, which is where the second novel in the trilogy, The Town, begins. In this novel, we see Flem Snopes rise to a position of real economic power, real wealth, real prominence, primarily trading on um, uh, his ability to carry out schemes and scams and to make money, um, whether in lots of really unethical ways. He's going to use his uh, family relations through EULA to, to gain position and eventually rise to the position to be the president of one of the two banks in Jefferson. And that brings him even more wealth and even more social standing. In the town, though, uh, Flem's family begins to cause him problems. You know, he is still uh, kind of surrounding himself with other, excuse me, my notes. He's still kind of surrounding himself with other Snopeses, but some of these poor relations then begin to cause him problems. They don't necessarily threaten him personally. They don't necessarily threaten his money, but they threaten his respectability. And so one by one, he kind of eliminates or moves on all these socially unaccept unacceptable Snopeses and he gets rid of them one by one so there's just really him and then kind of a Snopes who's almost like his complete opposite uh, left in Jefferson. He is opposed in the town uh, more so even than, than in um, in the Hamlet. He's opposed by B.K. Ratliff again and then by lawyer Gavin Stevens. Lawyer Gavin Stevens comes from the incredibly respectable middle class. He's gone to Harvard. He's a lawyer. He studied in Heidelberg, Germany. 
you know, he is the exact kind of antithesis of Flynn Snopes. He was born into a situation in which he took advantage. Uh, he's highly educated. And he and Flynn Snopes are kind of become then the two primary antagonists of one another in the city of Jefferson. And Ratliff and, and lawyer Stevens are not always aware of what Flynn's up to. And he always seems to be a step ahead of them. But part of what complicates that story is that Stevens is in love with Eula Varner. Eula, Var Eula Varner is Flynn Snopes' wife. Uh, and Eula Varner has been having an affair with other people in town, and this kind of really complicates things. Things really come to a head in the town uh, when Gavin Stevens turns his attention from Eula Varner to her daughter, Linda, and Gavin Stevens, Lawyer Stevens, is determined to save Linda Snopes from Flynn Snopes. Um, Linda Sn Varner Snopes from Flynn Snopes. And he's going to do this by ed through education. He provides her with books. He meets up with her. He tries to convince her to go to college. And there, then what happens is there's a power struggle about what's going to happen with Linda. And I won't go into all the reasons why Flem doesn't want Linda to go to college. But essentially that power struggle ends in, in kind of a really tragic way. And the tragedy at the end of the town really kind of then sets the stage for what will eventually be told, the story of the mansion. So the mansion is a third uh, novel in the Snopes trilogy. And in the mansion, Flim's achieved <clears throat> what he set out to achieve. He is living the big house. Uh, he has decorated. He's built columns on the front. It is an imitation, you know, of old southern plantation mansions. He's the president of the bank. He has lots of money. Uh, he has allowed eventually Linda to go off to go to college. Uh, and to leave uh, Jefferson and Yonkapatawa County, which, you know, puts Gavin Stevens' uh, mind at ease to a certain extent. But it's in the mansion that a lot of the things that Flim Snopes has done and has not done are going to come back to eventually cause him problems. One of the main vehicles of that is Mink Snopes, who reappears uh, in the mansion. And we see his time in Parchment Prison and how uh, vengeful he becomes about Flim Snopes not helping him and about whether or not Mink Snopes is going to get out of prison. And again, I won't go into much detail here, but essentially what evolves is a plot involving revenge, which involves all the major characters, Ratliff, Stevens, Linda, Mink Snopes, Flim Snopes, are all involved in this kind of plot, this kind of... Uh, evolving plot, whether they're doing it wittingly or unwittingly, uh, that brings about kind of the end of the Flim Snopes story. Um, in what is a surprisingly really, re really satisfying way, I thought, for all the weaknesses of the mansion, I do think there are quite a few. Uh, the way everything resolves, I think, is one of the strengths of that book, and therefore becomes one of the strengths of the series. So those are the three novels that uh, are part of the Snopes trilogy. And they're all about Flim Snopes and really what Flim Snopes gets up to and how people react to Flim Snopes and what Flim Snopes does and what happens to Flim Snopes. But this being Faulkner, he doesn't just, ex with the exception of the very last section of the mansion, he doesn't tell the story straight from a third person point of view. He has the other characters narrate and tell us different parts of the story so that we get Ratliff's point of view and Stephen's point of view, a young man named Charles Mal Mallison's point of view, we get Mink's point of view. But throughout all three of these novels, the one point of view that we never get is Flim Snopes' point of view. And this kind of helps to, I think, create the impression, which I think is likely right, that all Flim Snopes is, is this drive to achieve wealth and success, that there's not a lot else to him. And everything in these Snopes trilogy reinforces that idea that Flim has almost no other interest uh, than achieving this wealth uh, and achieving this social respectability. So in the mansion, he's already achieved those, achieved those things, and really then it is just Flim Snopes' fall, one way or the other, that we're looking for there. Anyway, like I said, the Snopes trilogy is not Faulkner's best work. It's not his best writing. It has kind of a patched-together feel. But the plot of the novel and the story of Flim Snopes is interesting. You know, as convoluted as the telling can be, as confusing as some of the writing can be, the story itself is really uh, engaging, uh, and Flim Snopes is a really interesting character, I think attracts our attention, and, and how all the machinations that Faulkner put in place to bring about, uh, to get him to the position he wanted to be, and 
then to resolve that, those things, I think are really, really well done. So I would definitely recommend, you know, and I have recommended before, if, you haven't, if you've never read Faulkner and you want a taste of what Faulkner's like in terms of theme and character and the way he writes the stories, but you're a little intimidated by, you know, the pure stream of conscious novels like uh, The Sound of the Fury or Absalom Absalom or As I Lay Dying or even uh, the more difficult uh, Light in August, you know, The Hamlet is not a bad place to start. Uh, it's not perfect, it's not Faulkner's at best, but it is a good story, good character, lots of the themes of Faulkner's work appear here. And if you read that one, you may want to carry on. Anyway, if you've read these books, if you're interested in these books, want to have a discussion about Faulkner, you know, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.